Peter Hamilton, how is the trip to Australia? Uh, the trip to Australia is always fabulous, particularly when you fly Air New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're one of New Zealand's most respected actors. Ooh, Do you feel respectable under three feet of dwarf beard? Uh, I always feel very respectable. Uh, and, and dwarves are very proud, upright creatures. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, sometimes it can get quite hot under there, but we are always very dignified and composed. Oh, I, I actually l looked at your photos and thought, did they choose someone who's bald because it's easier to glue all that stuff on? <laughs> Maybe they did. I don't know. Uh, it, I certainly um, had my moments with it because, well, I've said this before, the uh, beards and the hair, extraordinary uh, work from the wig making mm. people, um, was made with yak hair. And so I recommend that um, people insulate their homes with that now because it holds the heat brilliantly. I mean, it's phenomenal. Uh, How does it smell? It's, oh, it doesn't smell at all. It just smells of s sweaty, stinky actor a lot of the time <laughs> after a day on set. But, <laughs> but you know. And there's like 12 of you yeah, covered oh, in this. Oh, oh, look, look um, I think uh, one should acknowledge the bravery of the makeup and wardrobe teams, particularly <laughs> at the end of the day when there's... Um, Usually there's a scramble to, you know, because after a long day, and many long days, you really want to get out of the gear quickly. But, uh, and so there's a sort of a madcap scene in the um, costume sort of truck where people are trying to remove their costumes and um, the fat suits have absorbed quite a bit of um, moisture and, yeah... How do they get them ready for the next day? Do they have a way to dry them out? Because I've, I've had to wear those suits before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they've got every angle covered. So there, there's a whole kind of laundry system set up. And, again, amazing amount of work by the teams of people in making sure that uh, all the gear is, you know, washed or cleaned in whatever way because, yep, it's got to go back into action tomorrow and still look as, as fantastic. So um, washing, airing, drying... Uh, you know, all, all the resources necessary for that and a lot of hard work, a lot of uh, long hours by some fantastic people. Now, you seem to have a bit of a handle on the dwarf culture and the dwarf character, but about yeah. the dwarf voice, you know, you're, you're a very diverse group of actors. Yeah. How did you decide on, I guess, the accents that you were going to carry? Yeah, well, that was a fascinating part of the process. Uh, I think um, the whole kind of world of Middle-earth uh, as a spoken thing, of course, was, uh, you know, established for us by the wonderful Rings movies. Uh, in my case, Gloin being Gimli's father and Gimli having a Scottish accent, played by the wonderful Welsh actor, John rhys uh, Um he was always going to have a, a form of a Scottish accent. And, and of course, because um, Tolkien was English, I hope I've got that right. And, you know, so the, the whole kind of milieu of um, Middle Earth is very much drawn from uh, British accents. So you've got the, the, the range of Irish, Scottish, Welsh, English in there. Um, so in, in my case, um, we work with some wonderful uh, people, uh, our dialect coaches, dialect and accent coaches, um, uh, one woman in particular from Australia, the wonderful Leith McPherson, um, and there was some a number of other people as well. So we, as part of our training, you know, we called it boot camp process before filming began, we had a number of sessions working on how our accent would be formed and uh, mastering it. And, um, I mean, I, you know, did a... I, I've, uh, after 30 years as an actor, I've, you know, got some skill with accents and I had a shot at a Scottish accent in my audition but it, then at that point it became well what flavour of Scottish accent and we worked it out based on a whole bunch of things like that Gloin is a uh, fairly high status well he, he's related to the royal line uh, I suppose you could think of him as this kind of middle management in the whole kind of hierarchy <laughs> and um, so his accent reflects a sort of a um, 
a, a similar thing from the, 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 the sort of Scottish um, vocal range. And uh, because of his character, his, his uh, grumpiness, shall we say, uh, it had a particular, you know, certain things lent themselves towards that. And we just worked on it for uh, a good while. And, and then, of course, the brilliant thing was that those uh, people, our dialect coaches, were there right through filming to help us stay consistent and, um, you know, be finely tuned in what we were doing. So you did all that work and Martin Freeman just comes in and sounds like himself on The Office. Uh, he's a very lazy actor. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> Well, the results are clear up on screen, aren't they? No, he is such a wonderful um, person to work with, and and I um, I can't praise him highly enough. Uh, and I think in in time, his work as as Bilbo will be seen as one of the great screen performances. These films are full of huge special effects yes. sequences. Now, take me through, say from the second movie, in the barrels, riding down the river, fighting orcs. How is that actually filmed? Oh, just filmed live. You know, we just killed the orcs. And um, no, it, that, that sequence is a, is a fantastic example of all the uh, various filmmaking techniques drawn together in an astonishing way. Uh, if you look at the barrel sequence, yes, we filmed in barrels in a real river. Uh, but that was just one strand of it, if you like. And we also filmed again in all the gear, in barrels, in a thing that had been constructed in an old car factory, um, with huge machinery creating the white water. And we went round and round in a sort of a loop, uh, so that with the camera set up alongside with fake rocks and everything, so they could get a lot of close-up shots of us being, you know, going through the rapids. Uh, but it was under controlled conditions so that they could film all day long and get all sorts of angles and things. And then, um, of course, the green screen to flesh out the background in many parts of that. And then the amazing digital work, again feeding in elements where extra work by the stunt people in motion capture and so on and so forth. So it, it, it's, a, it's a perfect example of how those movies know one sequence is necessarily pure, but the, um, so many aspects are enhanced by the, that incredible technology and the, the, the wonderful artistry of those digital, uh, and the designers, we a workshop, we a digital. I mean, I can't speak highly enough of what they do. It's just miraculous. We uh, spoke to Sylvester McCoy when he'd just been cast and just had his first few meetings. Okay. That would have been entertaining. <laughs> He's always fun, isn't he? <laughs> And, and, and he said, you know, I've been trained that whenever I start talking about The Hobbit, my hand comes up and goes over my mouth like this. How seriously was, I guess, the secrecy of it taken on the set? Yeah, very seriously. Uh, I mean, there's all sorts of reasons for it, that certain things have to be kept a lid on. And uh, so we were, um, it was all made very clear and explained to us about, uh, at various points along the way, certain things that we could talk about and couldn't or shouldn't. So are there things right n n so are there things right now that you know about because the third film's on its way and, and, and that you can't talk about? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, absolutely. But but then um, also in terms of what's going to arrive on screen, we've had some glimpses of small fragments of it in terms of uh, in post-production doing, say, post-production sound, you know... Um, doing extra vocal stuff. Uh, but as I say, we might have seen 0.7% of it. Uh, so I can't really tell you how amazing it's going to be, except that I know for sure it'll be just astonishing. So are you going to go to the preview and that will be the first time you've seen the whole film? Yeah, this is what I love. I mean, uh, um, obviously we were heavily involved in the commitment stretches over um, three years and... Um, uh, I know what's been shot in terms of what we were involved in and uh, what's in the script, but it's happened every single time. That, that, I mean, the, the, when we went to the premiere, or the first screening, they gave us a special cast screening before the first premiere of the first movie, um, I literally sat there with my mouth, my jaw wide open, you know. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, how amazingly... 
um, effective um, those movies are. And then, of course, Desolation of Smaug, of course, raised the bar even further. And, and I know they do it every single time that this final movie will just blow everybody's minds. Is there one part in this new film we're going to see in the next few months that we should look forward to? Is there a bit that you enjoyed the hell out of filming that you're, you're going to tell us to keep an eye out for? There's a, yes, there's a, um, because it is, as they've called it, the defining chapter and it is the end of an epic saga. Well, yes, it's the prequel to the Rings movies and uh, as far as we know, it's from Peter, it's the end of his time in Middle Earth. There's a, some scenes which are wrapping up the story after all the action, which are about returning home and what, what are we left with and what's passed on. And the Sackville Baggins are stealing the spoons. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> I'll just get in trouble. Uh, but, uh, you know, there, there are wonderful aspects to uh, uh, once the story reaches its climax, shall we say, we're delivered back home w- with, with Bilbo. Uh, and it, it, it'll be very beautiful, very emotional, um, and will be a, a sort of a, a sense of closure. I, I think there'll be a lot of tears shed, actually. Yeah, I can't say anything more specific than that.